Thumbnails for I Am Cologne are about to start, and before things get kicked off, I'd like to have a look at some of the standout performances that I haven't got a chance to cover yet. So to start things off, I'd actually like to take a look at Ultimate, which of course is the new opera for Team Liquid, and I want to look at the game that they played versus FaZe, and even though they did lose the best of three, they did take a map off of FaZe, which was Nuke, and I think that Ultimate actually played really insane, and I think he has world-class potential, and I would like to talk about that and more after a quick word from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is the site where you can trade skins that you already have to get some skins that you might want. That way you can hop into your next game with some fresh new skins. All you have to do is log into the site through Steam, put in the skins that you don't want anymore, grab the skins that you do, and then click trade. Trades happen almost immediately, and any balance that you don't use in the trade will roll over for a trade that you might do in the future. Right now you can get a free $5 if you were to use code Austin on the site, and if you were to use my code you would get an additional 5% on top of the 30% deposit bonus. So let's say if you deposit $100, that means you would get $135 if you use my code to deposit. So make sure you guys check out Skins Funky and let's get right back into the video. Okay, we're kicking things off here on round four. You didn't miss much. You missed a pistol round, a full eco, and then the first gun round that Liquid was able to win, except Ultimate didn't see anyone, so I'm just skipping that as well. Starting here on round four, I'd like to talk about how I think Ultimate might be one of the smartest up-and-coming players that I've seen, and he, uh, he has this really big tendency to be aggressive on CT side. Now, we actually did cover this a little bit when we were doing a NAF demo review. If you haven't seen that in the top right of your screen, you can go check that out after this video. Um, I did kind of talk about how Ultimate likes to be disrespectful. He's a very confident opper, and that carries across every map that I've seen from this guy. Every CT side, this guy is pushing the boundaries, and you'll see what I mean later on in this review, so make sure you hang out and watch. Uh, he is a very aggressive player, but he's not a dumb player. You know, there's a fine line that you walk between being really smart when you're being aggressive or just being an idiot and he definitely doesn't ever really overdo it at least i haven't seen that there is somebody on this team that i think has a tendency to be too aggressive sometimes to the point where it might not be the right play and that of course being yakinda but actually i think that having ultimate to balance that out a little bit is kind of a nice addition to liquid which makes me excited for what they can do in the future so with that being said let's get into the round here nothing crazy so far has happened we had outside smokes now rain is of course the outside lurker we know this by now if you've been keeping up with all of my reviews i don't even need to link the video this time and ultimate's going to sneak in here in back garage this angle that he's playing here i mean personally we always called this the fang angle in na i don't know what you guys called it um at least that's what my teams always called it and the reason it's so good is because a lot of times what teams will do is they'll have their secret player who crossed come into garage late which is why you see this back garage angle so uh often used is because people are expecting this like late mini walk it's also just a good position anyway ultimate's playing the same spot just a little bit different though so he can catch people off guard i like that I don't actually think anything crazy happens this round as phase are just going to end up going lower Ultimate's going to be right behind him because he was in that advanced position and the round is going to be over before ultimate can even really do anything Actually, he just he wins the round by staying alive. Would you look at that? Which will take us on to round number five you might have seen this one in the highlight reel. This is a little 4K for Ultimate. Nothing too crazy. The boys on phase gave Rops a hero AK, and uh, Ultimate's just going to tap them away. So while he's doing that, I'll keep telling you, I think Ultimate is actually going to be a world-class player if he can keep up this form. And that is a big if. I am aware that that is a huge if, because there's a lot of people that could be one of the best players in the world if they could always play at their peak. But I was pretty impressed with him at Cologne. Now, I know a lot of people have been critical of him, saying that there's no way that he can keep doing this. And... I guess we'll have to see, right? But I am excited to watch them. I, I Well, Liquid, that is, continue playing into events. I really like the dynamic of this team with Twist being the IGL and still having a Kinder and Naf to kind of like spice things up, you know, with Naf being the ultra passive player that he is. And then, of course, your Kinder being the ultra aggressive player that he is. Um, it, it does make a very exciting team to watch. It really does. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be the beginning of Ultimate's op aggression that I was talking about. This is going to be round number six. Now, in my notepad here, I uh, I have this one in exclamation points because this one is insane. So what he does is Ultimate starts the round here with his ramp player, and he's going to be walk pushing into the ramp. Now, nothing out of the ordinary here, right? No, not, not at all. So they're going to push. Obviously, he's just kind of waiting. Naf's going to take this map control here as he's holding the line. Naf's actually going to go down. Off the back of that... In ultimate actually backs up which is pretty crazy because i was just telling you about how aggressive he is right well he backs up he takes a different angle and af off of this uh sound cube with the flash he's just like you know what actually i'm gonna keep pushing and this is a big deal think about this there's a lot of pressure here on ultimate if he dies the round is quite frankly over it's already a 4v5 they're not looking good and if he dies it's a three on five there is no way liquid wins this round and phases in the driving seat on t side of nuke which is scary so he comes in here has shadow advantage from that vending machine still not a big fan of the shadows in this game by the way especially the the ones that are indoors i hate them uh anyway he finds frozen 
and he just stays posted. He gets the trade and he gets this map control as well. And of course, they know that this is happening. So Rob's is coming back to push him. It's it's like, and he keeps going. He backs up and he retakes his angle. And even though he gets timing, the idea is still insane. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? He just keeps pushing it. He keeps pushing it. Now, I did tell you there was a fine line between aggression, like that was like smart and the aggression that was dumb, but this wasn't dumb. If he hadn't tried to fall back and make this smarter play, he actually would have probably got the kill onto Rops there. And then they would have been winning the round. It's just insane. I, I love seeing this from people who are new to playing tier one CS because it just shows you that all it really takes to be like a, a contender is to be good, which is the big one, but confident. Confidence has always been key. I mean, it even applies to you guys who are playing your pugs. I mean, there's a lot of people that watch my videos that are higher level and lower level, but if you're uh, like a, a lower level and you get matched up into a level 10 lobby, well, who's to say that you can't compete? And most of the time, people are just going to be nervous. That's the reason why they don't play so good. They're nervous. They're better players than me. Nah, man, just play with confidence. And that's exactly what you see. You see this from so many players. I think about Donk, who's, you know, who was new as of this year, or I guess a little bit like last year, but he was a new player and he just shows up and he's just dog dogging everybody, right? And then you also have Zontix as well, who even said in an interview that he, it does not make sense to get nervous or whatever he said. It, like, it makes no logical sense. Um, okay, a little bit of a rant there. Round number seven, this is actually a pretty cool round. I like this idea. So Ultimate's going to be uh, posting here. Uh, as soon as the smoke's deny his vision, he's going to have Twist throw a nice HE for him, which is going to blow open the smoke and uh, gives ultimate a little bit of an angle there. Unfortunately, did not actually spot him and uh, no kill will be granted. Ultimate will rotate in here. Not really gonna see anyone. Just a nice little detail there on uh, on the outside nade smoke there. Okay, round number eight. We have another round of it. Oh, wait, yes, round number eight. We have another round of aggression here, which is outrageous by the way. So he's gonna come out here, he's gonna be looking outside just like a normal opper would, and eventually he's gonna come in here, nades the mini smoke, doesn't see anything, but he does see that there's a vent lurk smoke. Now, this is crazy. Now, it makes sense, but it's crazy. It's a two on four, he throws a little flash for himself or whatever he just threw, I, I think that was a flash, and he comes through the mini smoke and he also comes through the vent lurk smoke. While the nade was up, while he blew this mini smoke open, he saw that there was a smoke. So he knew that there was a smoke tunnel, so he was like, I could just walk to sec or to, to, to squeak or to vent, which is fine if he has a rifle, but he has the op. This is outrageous. This is literally outrageous to do with the op. That's crazy. But it ends up working because he ends up in a really good spot. And as soon as the mini smoke fades, he realizes that Rops and him have traded spots. And now he's in the perfect position to deal with them after his teammate dies. Ah, boom. There you go. It's just aggression on top of aggression and i really appreciate players like this you haven't really seen a lot of this since like what simple in 2018 19 back in the day when he was just running around and opping everyone because he could that's exactly what this reminds me of now we have another round here where i i remember watching this round live and it <laughs> This one's silly. So what happens is it's it ends up late round, you know, we get the nade outside again, but Ra Rain is alone outside here. And this is a winnable clutch. The bomb is down ramp, I'm aware, but this is a winnable clutch if ultimate dies, right? You know, a minute on the clock, anything's doable. So naturally you would think ultimate's gonna take a, a farther back position and definitely not run through a smoke with dualies in his hand. Wait, 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 what are we doing? And it works. Okay. This is what I'm talking about, though. It's supreme confidence from Ultimate. He does not care. He's he's telling himself, I'm the best. I'm just the best. And it's not that he has an ego. It's that's literally what you have to tell yourself. You have to pretend that you're the best person in the server to make the plays that the best person in the server would make, right? You don't want to doubt yourself halfway through. Let's say he starts running through that smoke and halfway through, he's like, wait, I'm Ultimate. I'm not simple. And then he gets like scared and he runs away. Now he made the sound cues. Rain kills him because he hesitated. You can't. Just make the play that you think you're going to make right away. And if it's a dumb play, well, you'll find out later, won't you? But if it was a good play, then, well, there you go. You, you've got an entry. Round number 10 here. This is going to be uh, another push, another round of aggression. He's going to start the round by looking in towards Squeaky. Started mini or main again if you're from EU. And he just creeps in. Nothing stopping him here. Normally, you would see this kind of push if he had the supporting crew coming in from lobby. By the way, the reason this is also outrageous. Well, he does have twist with him, by the way. So it's, the reason this is also outrageous, though, is because they have your kinders. <laughs> under silo so right now they have all of the outside info and liquid like yeah but we also want more let's also push lobby this is normally not what you do 
it, it, it can work. It just isn't normally what you do. And the reason that is is because, well, most of the time, if you have outside, that means that the T's are in lobby holding for a lobby crunch. And if you they, if they are outside, then, you, well, then you would take lobby because they can't be there, right? Right now, Team Liquid have both on a gun round. Now, I get it. They don't have info on this part of lobby and where Rops is at. So they could still walk out hot. They could still walk out ramp. But it doesn't matter. Nobody can come in lobby. But also, they could go up the roof and down. I don't care. They're not going to do that, okay? This is outrageous. And these are the kind of pushes that you're allowed to do. And this is what I was talking about with the, uh, the dynamic of new liquid. Having Yakinder be an ultra aggressive rifle and having ultimate be an ultra aggressive opper, you could kind of just do whatever. And you have JKS and NAF to fill the gaps. And let's not even mention that Twist is on this team. At this point, you forget that Twist is on this team because it all just makes sense. You have two really disciplined riflers to counteract the one ultra aggressive rifler and the ultra aggressive opera. And Twist can do whatever he needs to do. He can clean up. What a, what a lovely team. This is I, I expect Liquid to do big things in the future. I really do. Anyway, with that being said, I'm just going to sit here. We're going to wait. Eventually, Kerrigan's going to creep his way back into lobby. Ultimate's going to find him, but it's a little too late. The round is kind of done. He's in a little 1v3 here. I thought he was going to save when I was watching this one live. He doesn't. He ends up hanging around. Looks for Ker uh, Well, not Kerrigan. Looks for Robs. Doesn't end up seeing him. Goes up. Goes down. And eventually, he hears some planet A. Comes down hut. He's going to hit a nice shot here onto, uh, onto Robs. Nice little quick scope, but eventually goes down. I would have liked to have seen him, him save the op, especially since Liquid's money is kind of kind of toast. But he does have enough for another op, so I guess fair enough. And uh, we get another aggressive round coming up here, round eleven. This time he's going to start main again, mini whatever. And the door is not nated, so he's like, you know what, vent lurk smoke. Yeah, I'm just going to go down vent. And this is actually a, a pretty standard play from the opper or another rifler who would normally start mini. Uh, this is not outrageous, but it is kind of just like another aggressive. I mean, this is a aggressive play to start mini and then drop the vent. Like it, it, it is still there. Now, what I find kind of silly, and I remember watching this live, is that ultimate doesn't actually know if someone can be down behind him. So he's not very comfortable holding this. Because remember, the vent lurk smoke is up. If we go back up top here, oh, uh, uh, if we go back up top, this is like, they, the, the other CTs can't really stop anyone from going down vent, and we don't have a guy on top of hut, so ultimate's kind of just on his own down here and he has to be aware of this now he knows that they could be down because remember the comms are good for the boys and they're gonna say well there was an outside smoke i think the other one already faded there was an outside smoke they could be down which is why ultimate's here to begin with now ultimate always gonna deliver at least one kill he's just gonna hang it out here eventually the boys on phase are gonna group up and i'm pretty sure that it's a instant trade so i think ultimate kills like frozen and then an instant trade comes in or no it's the other way around rain and then an instant trade comes in but still that's how you have to deal with the operas by the way really good work from phase to just make sure you double peek because i mean it, it if he gets away on the headshot angle like you lose you just will lose the round okay so i skipped the last part this is kind of the okay so i skipped the last part of that half as well as the first few rounds of this half because nothing really happened uh i want to showcase ultimate instead of the team itself so he's just doing whatever the team needs him to do as in set strats on t side so i don't really care too much about that instead i'd like to showcase some of the uh, individual brilliance from him here which is starting the round here he's going to get run boosted you might not have ever seen that one before but he gets run boosted onto the blue here and he's going to have a fast peek in towards garage now another small detail is if anyone is crossing in towards secret fast or maybe towards back red he can actually see them so that's nice and look he's already here at 144 so if brokey would have hung around a little bit longer he might have just gotten ultimate he might, he might have gotten a, a kill onto him he might have gotten destroyed hard to say i wish we would have got to see it now the problem is is that i had to rewind this round a few times so the kill feeds glitch but the problem is is that this is kind of the beginning of team liquid struggling to find any impact with ultimates op and maybe this is like you know just good calling from you know kerrigan on the other side maybe this is just struggling from liquid i'm not sure uh, but nothing nothing too crazy is going to happen here. They're going to end up in a ultimate on an island. He finds one kill under ROPS, like I said, and then they just kind of walk around and eventually drop into the back of the site. I mean, nothing really is happening. It's not that convincing, but uh, he does have a really nice shot here. Watch this. Ah, boom. Oh, wow. That was a fast one, huh? That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about, though. You'll see later when we go back into, into overtime. When we talk, start talking about the comeback, ultimate starts to fire up. He starts to get fired up. The, the longer the game goes, the more you see it. So we had a pause coming into round number 
number 18 here and uh, the strat for the boys is just to go down towards secret now ultimate is on the ak which like i said he is going to be more comfortable on the ak or the rifle i i guess on t side of nuke and a lot of operas find it this way i mean it's hard to really work around all these smokes to get thrown in the lobby and also uh, the upper bomb site as well as the lower bomb site not very op friendly to be honest like trying to walk out with all of the verticality on those sites is it's very difficult for the op and it's just sometimes easier for operas to be on the rifle and uh you know so yeah we got nothing crazy going on like i said it's not the most convincing t side from liquid uh, eventually ultimate finds his way in towards lower here and him and naf know they have to make a play two on four they're going to creep up ramp together and just try to catch people off guard ultimate peaks he gets one and eventually goes down round number 20 here i did skip the full eco of round number 19 but you know again they come outside he's just trying to work this up but they just aren't finding anything the boys are getting destroyed and not a lot to say here we might even just skip this round because ultimate just ends up saving in t spawn or sorry ct spawn now I know I just went on this spiel about opera sometimes preferring the rifle on T-side nuke, but ultimate is not necessarily always that opera. And this round, because he saved the op last round, he realizes that this is a round he needs to make the play. So him and Yakinder, who will probably be an iconic duo before it's all said and done, are gonna make their way outside. And like I said, he knows that his teammates don't have a lot to work with, so he needs to search outside and look for a pick. As you can see, the rest of the boys are grouped up in towards ramp here. I really bad circle, and they're gonna go for a B split. The idea is maybe ultimate and yakinder can somehow sneak their way into either garage or secret and the boys can take ramp and maybe we can end up on like a b split right so yakinder he knows that brokey is in towards back garage he's going to be sitting here posting and waiting for him he knows he's there he has info from yakinder he's waiting and brokey eventually is going to give him this fight but again unfortunately when brokey does give him this fight ultimate misses it now off the back of that he, rain is going to come out here and fight to help brokey but ultimate is actually ready for this assistance to come in and we'll find rain so we've got our first opening here ultimate gets legged by brokey somehow he survives this fight and he lives you know to go on now off the back of that shot it's important to note that yakinder has actually snuck past everybody because of course the defense was hold had rain holding outside somehow yakinder caught a gap into garage like i said very aggressive player and he's going to actually catch brokey off so this little duo of yakinder and ultimate has successfully gone two for well none outside they, they got two kills outside and somebody died in lobby so, so far so good. They're going to start creeping into mini. They want to do the split. It's a two on four. They should be winning this round, but that's when Frozen steps out and he finds one. Rops is, of course, going to come in from the heavens here and he's going to shut them down. So, again, this was a really good round from Ultimate, but it doesn't end up working out. But he did start, like I said, to level up. And it's not necessarily that Ultimate had a bunch of impact that round, but it was the idea that he needed to take things into his own hands right there. Like I said, he's the one that needs to search. That's what the idea starts where it's now he realizes that it's on him to make a difference so for round number 22 it's going to be somewhat of like a normal uh, ramp round here but like i said he knows now that he is the person that needs to make the difference in this game so they're going to do a regular lobby setup here hold for everything you can do is kind of pushing buttons outside see if they want to go for a crunch and nothing really ends up coming of it eventually you know they're going to group up here it's kind of a slower round they're going to go towards ramp and here we go. Ultimate comes out, finds the first kill. Now, Rops reveals himself. Ultimate actually uh, dinked him. And Ultimate now, again, coming down, needs to plant the bomb. Needs to get it down before the, uh, the round ends. It's JKS supporting crew again. Finds one. Ultimate steps out, gets a second kill. Ta-da! There's a 2k from Ultimate. Big impact from him. He's gone. He's, he's, he's got to stop him. Now, I've gone ahead and skipped the full eco that face takes. Ultimate only gets one, which, by the way, he's on 22 kills, so he's actually kind of having a heater. 22 and 11 going into the deciding round on if they're going to make overtime. Now, again, he's on the rifle, kind of just supporting the rest of the team, throwing the utility and whatnot. Now, whenever the opper uses a rifle, typically he's going to stay in the back. You know, they don't want you to know like they're not trying to tell phase that he doesn't have the op like they still want them to be afraid of it so he's gonna kind of hang in the back he's gonna be trading the entries and they're gonna creep out into lower uh ultimate get the kill on the kerrigan you know with the assistance of jks they're gonna freeze and eventually uh you know they're gonna keep going twist finds one more the round is kind of over overtime is inevitable rops right here gonna 
go down to a, a crazy shot from ultimate by the way who is again very mechanically talented on the off but as well as the rifle frozen tries his best but unfortunately nothing is going to come of it and we're going to be going into overtime okay first round of overtime and like i said he's on a heater he actually decides to stay on the ak this round goes for the movement and one towards top silo here <clears throat> valve please fix and he's made his way up here now again like i said he's just going to be maintaining you know overwatch over outside and holding secret making sure nobody's back red kind of allowing for your kinder to go for a more aggressive play now he's dueling with this ak like it is an op drops his utility over it, which is a small detail kind of cool and uh, you know nothing too crazy he's going to end up eventually coming down here with the, with this team so a pretty slow round, all things considered. Now, he's going to make it just in time here to hold for the lobby crunch with his teammates. And eventually, Frozen's going to come in here and... And Ultimate's going to find him. JKS is going to find the opper. Now, look at what Ultimate's doing, by the way. Instead of just rushing at Brokey, who he knows has the op, you would think that that's what he should do, by the way. He doesn't. He's actually holding Mini and making sure that nobody that could be helping Brokey can do that. And... He wants to make sure that they also don't get collided. That's a really big deal. And if a rifler were to also swing out for mini, he also wants to limit the amount of time that they could be 2k'd, right? So, he lets JKS get the kill. And again, instead of just being on JKS, ready to trade him, he actually stands back a second, holds for that swing, gets the smoke out for mini. Now he steps out. And because of the spacing being a little bit more delayed, he's actually in time to stop Rain from swinging into the site. Now, if Rain were able to step out into the site here, look at the time. If he finds this kill onto JKS, he could tuck into this con uh, cubby here, maybe get one more kill, buy enough time for Robs to win the clutch. But no. That doesn't happen because ultimate beautiful 2k from him and the round will go the way of uh of liquid by the way small detail he also hangs out here to make sure that they don't get ninja diffused sorry rops not today we get round number 26 it's gonna start the exact same way providing overwatch making sure nobody's creeping around those smokes checking out back of garage like you would and uh, while this is happening i'd like to take the time to remind you this was a big comeback for liquid so the pressure's on for phase and liquid is kind of riding off of that momentum which is funny because i just talked about in the video before this about the phase comeback and how liquid was kind of choking well in this game phase is kind of doing the same thing so if you want to watch the video of that breakdown though top right of your screen right now and anyway we get one person we fake that as if we've gone down secret brokey has re-aggressed into lobby found a kill on a jks and now we're going to walk out door nothing too crazy is going on this round it's just a late a hit kerrigan actually uh i thought a little out of position but that iconic duo again of ultimate and your kinder make their way out door and they both get a kill no trades either and that's going to be the round so it's kind of looking rough for phase now i'm actually going to skip the final round of overtime because phase you know liquid try to run a set strat it doesn't really work out for them and uh they lose the round so switching back over to ct side i'd like to show you which these last two rounds from ultimate of the game I dare say are probably the most impressive rounds I've seen from a, a new opera. I'll let them play out, but you're going to see what I mean. Remember what I told you earlier about Ultimate being an ultra aggressive CT side opera? Well, you're going to see it again here. Gets flashed to peek outside, looking around, kind of just, you know, he knows that they're hiding. He waits, misses the shot, but he doesn't want to run away. Instead, he actually backs up to get a better angle in towards that silo angle, and eventually he... Knows that Yakinder has gone down, which, by the way, hilarious. Again, like I said, Yakinder ultimate, both ultra aggressive. Yakinder keeps pushing after ultimates get spotted. Now, off the back of that, you would think, well, now we need to cut our losses. We lost Yakinder. No, 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 no. I was thinking about falling back, but now Yakinder is dead, so it's my turn. So this is it. Like I said, ultimate's kind of like the op version of Yakinder. Sticks around, finds one onto Rain, but it's not done yet. Now he knows that he's in a lot of trouble. Throws the smoke to keep himself alive. The Molly forces him out, but a crazy shot on to Frozen, and he whips out the 5-7. A real chance here if Kerrigan would have given him the fight in time that he finds the kill. Whips out the op instead, and he almost makes it happen, but Brokey gets the kill before him. But those two kills are very high impact, and not only are they very high impact, they're very high aggression plays. And he hits those shots. Very, very reminiscent of Simple. And I'm not even just saying that to say that. I don't want to get you excited, but seriously, that is something that you would see Simple do. He goes for an out-of-this-world play, Something so ridiculous that you would never expect it, but he makes it work because he mechanically he just can. And we have another round here, which I thought was a pretty good example of that. He starts in hut and he keeps pushing. He knows that they already lost your kinder, just like last round. He knows that he needs to make the difference, so he activates. Kind of like remember earlier when I was talking about that ramp push where he lost a player and instead of just falling back and playing the 4v5, he pushes. Now, hangs out in towards hut here. 
And I think he actually misses his first shot onto Frozen here. Does. Now you would think he should fall away. He actually just reposts. Misses again. You know, now we gotta we gotta go. No. Repost again. That's insane. You would think that you're watching like a brand new opera. Like anybody that's like playing in ESEA leagues, like this is like an open opera and uh, ESEA intermediate opera. He keeps repeaking. He never falls back. No, 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 no. This is ultimate. The guy that doesn't care about what he should and shouldn't do. This is somebody who sticks around. You're going to have to make him not do it or he's going to do it. You have to stop him from making those plays because if you can't stop him, then he's not going to back up. He won't stop. If, if you can't, if you cannot prove to ultimate that you can stop his aggression, then he's not going to stop. And that's it right there. He took three shots on frozen three, well two but that missed. And then a third and he doesn't even stop there. He backs up, sees the outside fights coming in and realizes that, wait, hold on. I'm playing phase clan. Is it? Drops the lobby lurk. So before he goes to help his teammate, he looks in towards Squeaky and there he is. He finds Rops, and not only does he find Rops, he finds 16, and that is the comeback completed for Team Liquid. Now, this ultimate guy, he's very impressive. I don't know what you guys think. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below, but I think that he could be the next... The, the future for Team Liquid. I, I think he could be the next big thing. I think there's a lot of Ultimate fans that have been made this event, including myself. I'm a pretty big fan of what I've seen so far. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys did enjoy this demo review, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, especially if you watched this long. Come on, man. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. I'm going to be out of here. Bye-bye. Much love as always. And I'll see you soon. Peace. Imagine if I just never ended the video. It'd be kind of funny, wouldn't it? Go, go watch my other channels, please. They're linked on my on the, on the right side of the screen. Just go, go check them out. Go check them out.